Christian will defend in the big with the 7 4. Comes Jack 8 7. Bottom pair for Christian, top pair for Ludo with a gut shot. If I'm Christian, I don't love it, but I'm not ready to give up quite yet. I plan on calling and taking a look at another straight. Ludo with the gut shot, obviously top pair. Can't really fathom he'd ever consider checking back. How about this 1.2, yeah, very small sizing. Christian does check call. And does turn a seven. Disaster now for Ludo. However, that being said, Christian does have all the sevens and all the eights, right? This lead and is all going the diamonds to be as well. Brutal. Yeah, this is a this is a very, very difficult lead now for Ludo to consider getting away. Christian does lead here for two point eight million. Also on the smaller side. Ludo with about 19 behind. There are certainly hands that maybe Christian would consider taking this line with as a bluff, something like 5-6 with a diamond. That's not a not a very cool turn card for young Ludovic Gailuk there. He was sitting so pretty against the 7-4 off with no diamond, but, you know, things don't always go according to plan. Speaking of plan, Ludo, with 19 blinds, do you think he should be opening the Jack-10 off preflop? I think it's fine. Um, what with the eleven players left and the money jump being so dramatic here, like everyone's locked up sixty thousand. First place is a million dollars. I think you're supposed to be playing for the win, and one of the ways you play for the win is you expand your range a little bit. Um, I know he's short, uh, but um, I like the open. It's certainly not necessarily standard at this spot when you're this short, but I think it's cool. Um, he thinks he's got a post flop edge. He's going to be in position. I'm cool with it. What do you think? I'm cool with it. Uh, I think it's also just indicative that we can give Ludo a, a much wider range. And we're going to talk about solver stuff a little bit later. And in that, we have Ludo's range, which here it is on the screen. This is what we came up with. It's our best guess. But yeah. as you guys know, most of you, Ludovic Alex is very loose. Maybe we didn't give him a, a loose enough range here, even despite his short stack. Yeah, maybe we should have given him all the aces. Maybe we should have given him more, like even the bottom pocket pairs. We thought he might be shoving those. Maybe some more suited connectors, jack eight suited. We weren't really sure. We did our best. It's a little unclear. Right, but this is what we gave him, so that's what we're working with here. Yeah. And uh, the seven four off, although a bad hand, is a, a pretty clear call when it's a min raise and you yeah. have the stack that Christian Rudolph has here. Ludo betting very small on the flop means that Christian's range is a lot wider than it otherwise could be if Ludo had bet something like half pot on the flop, you know? So that, that means that Christian doesn't necessarily have to have it here when he leads the turn. What oh, yeah. do you think about him leading the turn, by the way? I like the lead a lot. Um, I think he's going to be hopefully balanced with some of a bunch of the other hands. Like you said, he can have hands like ace four with the ace of diamonds here, call one blind on the flop turn the nut flush draw and lead this card. It's a right. great card to any, lead. Any 10 or any 9 that he would play, he might play it this way because as it stands, he uh, maybe not against Ludovic Gailuk specifically, but from a traditional perspective, Christian Rudolph has a strong range advantage on the turn when the 7 pairs. He has more of those hands in his range than Ludovic Gailuk is supposed to. As we see, he has 7-4 off. Ludovic Gailuk is definitely not supposed to have 7-4 off here. Now, I, w I will say, conversely, you would think that uh, Rudolph mostly is going to ha not have flushes here because if he had a flush draw on the flop, he's often going to raise it when Ludo's this short. So we can so we can eliminate some of that stuff where Ludo still has all the flush draws, I would say, in his range. Right. So anyway, what does the solver say about Christian's bet on the turn? Let's take a look. All right, so it does want him to lead 73% of the time for the sake of balance. That makes sense with the range advantage, of course. He should be slightly afraid of the diamonds, but I guess the solver doesn't care. 
Yeah, I think partially cause just because Ludo's so short. It's like, whatever, we're just going with it. We even have outs if he's got the diamonds. Like, so be it. Right. Although the solver does prefer for balance Christian to lead 73% of the time, it doesn't actually see an expected value difference between the small and big sizing that he could choose here or the difference between checking and betting. So it's kind of all the same. Right. Like, it's, it's like, hey, you have a good hand. hand. It's going to go well. Is yeah, basically right. what it's saying. Yeah, right? Whatever you do, it's all going to be fine. <laughs> and then we see that... Ludovic Gilek calls the turn. That makes the most sense in the world. There's really else nothing else you can do. Right. Let's see if Christian goes for value on the river. Before we get to that river, we must talk about our sponsor, the people who keep the lights on. That's Nitrogen Sports Poker. They've got casino games. They've got sports betting. And, of course, they have poker as well, including our special online tournament. Right. If you want access to that tournament, go to our Twitter feed. It's on the screen right there. We tweet out a link to Nitrogen on that Twitter feed pretty frequently. Find it there. That gives you access to that tournament. We will see you on Nitrogen for some poker, some sports betting, and some other fun stuff. Massive overlays. This type of run out is going to cost Ludo some more chips. River Queen of Spades, 14.6 million in the pot. Ludo is 16.4 million behind. Christian Rudolph with trip sevens. Time extension used. We consider an overbet here, putting Ludo all in. He's gonna looks like 6.2 million is what he slid out. Just a brutal spot now. I hate it if I'm Ludo. Obviously, he does too in the moment. It's. Nothing but a bluff catcher. Maybe 10-6, 9-6, 5-6, all, ha all hands that have a diamond. Did he get lucky with a queen? You have to wonder if maybe queen 10, queen 9 mm -hmm. would take this sort of line as well if it had a diamond. It doesn't look like he has any time banks left. How about this? The raise from Ludo. Wow. Oh, this is filthy. Turns his hand into a bluff, makes it 12.5 million. Oh my goodness. Oh, Jeff, we are seeing something special here. The 10 in his hand can represent the 9-10. For all the times that we are up against 7x, we just try and put those hands in hell. This is just gorgeous stuff by Ludo. It may work. Those sevens in a bad spot, and like you said, also he did queen. have queen nine or queen ten, yeah. or something like that. With the diamond. Christian's hand may just be a little too good, yeah. given the price. Are you trying to fucking me off? <laughs> <laughs> Ten months you didn't know. Shouldn't read that. <coughs> so it's like Jack, Minbet, seems weird on that board as well. No, he's, he's pinpointed it, um, it seems. He's trying to induce something, but Jack doesn't profit that much. Seven, no, eight. Doesn't make sense. Nine, ten, clean. No, it's a bit big. Flush draws, you should check always. All the time. Like, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> We're learning. <laughs> For your lesson, right? So, yeah. I, know I have no idea. <laughs> what I'm uh, representing, I don't have presenting a flush. Because I'm not betting. Polarized. Um, <laughs> I'm representing a seven. Some bluffs as well. I know you're capable of bluffing there, so I think I can't put a seven here. 
Well, he talked his way through that wow. one and ended up with the correct call. Oh my goodness. Well How done, Christian Rudolph, and put on a clinic for all of us at home as well. All right, so this queen comes, and it looks like a significant card because it feels like it's coordinating with the board, but it's actually kind of a bricky card when you think about it, right? There's not that many queens in either player's range. Not a ton, at least. Not too many. I mean, we can come up with things that um, Christian will have here, like queen 10 and queen 9, which I think he would lead the turn with. And Especially if he had a diamond there. Yeah, even so. But yeah. I, th I think either way, he's probably leading one of the seven pairs. Yeah, a lot um, of the time. With his gutter and overcard. And then he hits this. Um, that's very reasonable for him. Ludo, of course, can have pocket queens. Maybe maybe he can have king, queen, and ace, queen with a big diamond in his hand and have hit this queen also. Um, I don't think Ludo has queen nine or queen ten anymore. I don't think he can call the turn with that. So the queen doesn't play too much. But a little bit. Right. So with that in mind, do we think that Christian should continue betting for value on the river here with his hand? I think he should continue betting for value. Um, I would just be worried that Ludo is going to check back a lot on the turn. Uh, sorry, on the river. Ludo has like his made hands are mostly calling the turn. And his, if he had big draws, he's sometimes just going to raise those on the turn if he has like, yeah. the ace of diamonds. So I don't know if Ludo has a huge amount of bluffs here if we check. Um, and... I wouldn't. I we don't have to worry about too much. We're usually ahead. Of usually, Ludo. Ludo could be slow playing a flush, but of yeah. course, we expect him to raise that some of the time on the turn, right? Mm -hmm. He could also be slow playing a full house. Right. He could have eights and jacks, and of course, he could have rivered queens. Full. Right. Yeah. Ultimately, betting feels like the right play. Yeah. And it feels like I kind of want to bet bigger, though. Yeah. Like I'm not really so sure about this 6.2 million that Christian chooses here. It feels like Ludo's the type of guy who doesn't want to be pushed around. He's a guy who's going to hero with similar frequency, I think, uh, to a pot size bet or even a shove as he would to this smaller bet. What do you think? I mean, I agree. I also think, can, like, going along with that, the turn bet could have been bigger, which would have set up a bigger river bet. Yeah, more, that's true. More cleanly and easily. Like, if we bet bigger on the turn as Christian, we can probably go all in on the river very comfortably. And if Ludo has anything reasonable, he has something reasonable, by the way. He may just feel like he has to call. Uh I like a big bet here almost regardless, though, of what happened on the turn. I think we should polarize ourselves more, not less here, and you know, put, let Ludo hero if he wants to hero. You know, Ludo's a crazy bluffer. He's going to hero more because of it, too, because he thinks everyone thinks the way he does. That's what everyone thinks, right? Well, he certainly bluffers. is a crazy bluffer, as we can <laughs> yes. see. I mean, when this bet comes in on the river on this queen of spades, which is not the best card in the world, but as we touched on briefly, it doesn't really factor into Christian's range that much. I mean, sometimes he has a queen, but it's rare. And we're not entirely sure that he, he would even bet a queen on the river. Now, he might, but he also might check it, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's not a huge factor, but Ludo decides his hand isn't good enough to call, and he's not giving up because he's Ludovic freaking Gaelic. So he's going to raise, and interestingly enough, not go all in, but basically min-raise. What do you think about this? I don't really like this at all, I got to say. Uh, we're, we're, we're taking on a very strong range that's polarized already when it goes bet-bet, right? It's yeah. either missed its gutter, and there are gutters it can have, by the way, that we are clearly ahead of. There are bluffs here, like... 10-3 suited, 10-4 suited, 9-4 suited, and so on and so forth, right? Yeah. There's all that kind we of stuff. We do block some of those with a 10. Okay, but there's still a bunch out there, right? Um, I just don't know. There's not a whole lot of good that can come from this because we're targeting such a strong range here. We're basically targeting trip sevens and I guess the random queen that hits, the queen 10 and queen 9 that hits. Right, we're not expecting to get a fold out of a flush, right, if somehow Christian shows up with a flush. I don't see how. I mean... I guess we could. We're repping as Ludo, I think, full houses. Mostly. I think we're mostly. I think well, Ludo has the jack in his hand. I think he's like, I have jack, jack, and I block it. It's gr fine Ludo, with me. Ludo, to his credit, does have all of the queen, queen, jack, jack, eight, eight in his range. Yeah. Even seven, seven, although not from Christian's perspective. We'll get to that later. That said, that's not that many hands, no. right? And he has a hand with. Uh, the potential to win by just calling. He could be blowing up his tournament by raising here. I agree. Um, he also, by the way, does have other strong hands. He's got the nut flush for sure. He might have 9-10 here. I'm not sure if he's raising 9-10 or not, but he might. He might have a 7 and be raising the river. It's possible. He might be. Um, so he has a bunch of really, really strong hands here for sure. Right, but my, my default thought process here would be call or fold if I was Ludovic Geilich, Ex right? I agree. No, because our hand is good enough. Like we have the jack, so it feels like it's good enough to be able to make the call and not and like we don't have to bluff, 
Because and also the and the the range that we're trying to get to fold is strong. Yeah. Right. It's like top pair are better only. Yeah. Cause, and cause mostly, we're beating everything and it's else. mostly trips, right? It's yes. Like top pair is a lot less of the range than trips. No, absolutely. Because Christian has so many trips in his range. As we see, he has seven four off. I think he probably has seven deuce suited plus yes. and seven four off plus. I think so. So we're really targeting a seven, which when we're giving him such a good price feels ambitious to me. It does. And listen, if this was a different player, not Ludovic Gilek, if this was a very rocky player who's deciding to bluff for the first time in a long time or has an image anyway where he, no one thinks he's bluffing, this could, this would work. Yeah, right? that's like, quite possible. 7-4 is probably going in the muck. But it's Ludovic Gilek. Ludovic Gilek goes for it all the time, and everybody knows that. And so. he goes for it here. Yeah. Let's see what the solver says, huh? Yeah. Well, the solver does like a call the best. It wants to call 58% of the time. It wants to fold 31% of the time. It does want to raise some of the time more than I expected. 11% yeah. of the time it wants to raise. But that's all for balance. As far as expected value is concerned, the solver thinks that calling is basically zero EV. Folding is obviously zero EV. And raising is minus 330K chips worth of EV, which, which is not that negative. No, but it's not. It is certainly different than zero. It is different than zero for sure. Um, you probably do get some queens to fold when you raise, right? And that, that's yeah. probably the most. That's probably most of the value of it. That probably is. So, whether or not he should do it, that's the spot that he puts Christian in. How should Christian approach this now? I mean, it's interesting, right? Like Christian doesn't have an insta call, as we see. He's I mean, got to work it, it out. It obviously sucks. Like this right. is not what you wanted to happen. And this is one small benefit of betting bigger as Christian. Your decision is much easier on the river. You don't ever get put in this spot. Right. That's right. But instead, he bets small, and now he's in this spot. And we can hear his thought process. Here's some of that right here. 10 months, you didn't know. Shouldn't raise it. <coughs> so it's like Jack, Minbet, seems weird on that board as well. Uh, he, he's pinpointed so it, it seems. He's trying to induce something, but Jack doesn't profit that much. Seven, no, eight. Doesn't make sense. Nine, ten, clean. No, it's a bit big. Flush draws, you should check always, all the time, like, that doesn't make sense. I am representing a 7, some bluffs as well, I know you're capable of bluffing there, so I think I can't do the 7 here, I have to call it. Interestingly enough, he's saying, I think, as far as I can discern, that he doesn't think that Ludo would be betting flush draws on the flop ever, which is very strange to me. I don't understand it at all. I mean, Ludo, the flush draws that Ludo would be having here would be nut flush draws and combo draws mostly, exactly the kind of hands he would be betting on the flop. And it would easily short. call off, yeah. Yeah, like very comfortably call off. Um, so I'm really surprised he says that. Um, he still ends up finding his way to the correct call in this case, but I wonder if he if the path was actually a true one or if he just sort of fell into it a little bit right. with, with that and, analysis. And I don't know where he's getting that because Jonathan and I certainly don't think that that makes sense, that yeah. Ludo wouldn't be betting flush draws, and neither does the solver. Right. The solver believes that Ludo should be betting most of his flush draws on the flop. So I'm not really sure where he's coming up with that logic, but whether it or not that was how he ended up finding a call, it ended up being the right call in this situation I guess if you remove all flushes from his range, it makes sense. I don't know if we can, though. Well, I mean, the thing I think that's most key here, though, because I agree, you can't remove all flushes from his range. I think he's flatting the nut flush a lot on the turn, yeah. for example. Um, and maybe some other ones, too. But in the end, Christian says, you're capable of bluffing. And that is the Ludovic Gallic curse. Yes. And so it's like your ima his image made it so... You're capable of bluffing. I have to call. He puts the chips in almost right. immediately. As soon as, as soon as he says that sentence, he realizes, of course, I have to call. Right. And that is so player dependent, yes. right? Because like 7-4 is very near the bottom of Christian's distribution. Christian has better sevens in his range for sure. Mm -hmm. He's probably got a decent amount of flushes in his range, although he wouldn't play them all exactly this way. The only hands worse than a seven with no kicker that he could have are those queens that he may or may not even bet on the river. So distribution would demand a fold. And of course, he can only beat a bluff here. He beats exactly zero value with 7-4. Right. And that's, you know, poopy for it's sure. It's poopy, but the, the non-poopy thing is he's playing against Ludovic Geilich. Right. It's not his tournament on the line here. And, and Ludo takes a hand that a lot of people would call with or fold and instead raises. And so if he's doing that, now it means, Scott, he's got so many bluffs probably, right? Maybe, right. He's got a, maybe some of his queens are bluffs. Probably now. doesn't matter what the solver says when it's Ludovic Geilich. <laughs> So this river just like kind of went cray cray a little bit. Suddenly everyone was making weird and interesting decisions. Uh, what do you guys think about this? Do you like Ludo's decision 
to raise this river and also to, to click it back, by the way, not even go all in. That's one of the interesting decision points for sure. Of course, Christian's decision to ultimately call with near the bottom of his range and something that can only be to bluff is interesting as well. He ultimately decided he had to. We like that. What do you guys think about that? Also, there's other things you could decide to talk about here. Some of the sizing that people uh, went with both on flop and turn. Let us know in the comments what you think. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Also, down below the video, just like the comments, you can check out the description where you can find a link to the pokerguys.net, which is where you can purchase the greatest poker poker book ever made. Uh, it is it is currently the greatest poker. Yeah, I don't know if it's always going to be. Until we make another one. Fine. Yeah, it's called How Can He Fold? You can t take that link to our website. That can take you to Amazon to buy the paperback, or you can get the ebook right there on the website. It is 37 hands meticulously broken down by us in text conversations is beautifully illustrated da vinci is jealous of the illustrations <laughs> in this book jonathan they are nice how can he fold check it out it's probably not at your local library so you gotta buy it